Welcome to Chemical Process Safety. This video is about inherently safer process design. In the last video, I talked about how implementing safeguards is a possible strategy for reducing the likelihood or severity of accidents. Safeguards can be effective, but remember that they aren't perfect. Safeguards can be expensive, and they might require maintenance and testing to be effective. Even if maintained and tested regularly, they might fail anyway. But what if we tried a different approach? Instead of safeguards to defend against the hazards, what if we work to eliminate the hazards in the first place? This is the philosophy of a safety practice called inherently safer design. There are four key strategies. The first strategy is minimization. This means making process units, like reactors, as small as possible. Or reducing storage inventory of hazardous raw materials, intermediates, or byproducts. Minimization makes processes easier to control, and even in the case of an incident, consequences are less severe than a larger counterpart. An obvious drawback of minimization is that it seems antithetical with chemical engineering. After all, we are good at scaling processes up and exploiting the economics of scale to make processes profitable. The second strategy is substitution. This is about replacing hazardous materials or process components with safer ones. For example, a chemical mixture of chlorofluorocarbons called Freon used to be a very popular refrigerant. Only problem was that it was very harmful to the ozone layer if it got released. So nowadays, Freon has been replaced by a blend of hydrofluorocarbons called Pyron, which is much better for the environment. Unfortunately, there's a pattern that you might have noticed, which is that safer alternatives sometimes just don't work as well as the hazardous ones. This presents a trade-off, which engineers need to navigate carefully. The third strategy is moderation. If you must use hazardous components, the moderation strategy is about choosing process conditions that lessen the hazards. For example, operating at lower temperatures and pressures, or possibly refrigerating storage vessels to lessen the vapor pressure of liquids. Here again, this sounds great in theory, but the challenge is the trade-off between safety and effectiveness. For example, we know that reaction rates are faster at higher temperatures, so operating colder will make the reactions go slower. The fourth and final strategy is simplification. The more complex a process, the more chance there is for error. The image I'm showing now is electrical cables instead of pipelines, but hopefully it's a good visual. Simplification includes clear labeling systems, reducing piping lengths and complexity, and selecting equipment with higher reliability that requires less frequent maintenance. Once more, however, there might be a functional reason why a process needs to be complex, and simplification might not be possible while maintaining function. Inherently safer process design can reduce the hazards significantly, but as we've seen, it can only go so far. Ideally, inherently safer process design would be applied in the early stages of process development, where there's more flexibility. Also, it would be used in conjunction with safeguards to further reduce the hazards.